day. I can't wait. Uh, now, forecasters have predicted that we are heading into a particularly severe hay fever season with some of the highest levels of birch pollen ever recorded. Well, how do you get your symptoms under control? We've had loads of calls for allergy specialist Professor Adam Fox uh, this morning. Um, so we'll get straight to the phones Welcome. and we've got Sally on the phone in Derbyshire. Hi, Sally. Hi. Hiya. Hi, right, OK, so you've been suffering since you were a child. Yes, um, uh, I have hay fever and I'm an asthmatic as well, so things can get a little bit tricky. Um, and I've just woke up this morning feeling horrendous, so your calling was great. So what, what, have you, what do you take? Uh, so I take uh, an antihistamine tablet called tyrosine. I take that every day and I take that all through the year because I struggle in winter as well. Um, but then during these months, I do a nose spray and uh, eye drops. And they're not helping today. Gosh, I mean, you're doing the whole thing, aren't you? That's the whole set of antihistamines. Yeah, that's really tough. And the other thing you've mentioned is that you've also got asthma. And that's really important because there's an enormous overlap between people who suffer from hay fever and people who suffer from asthma. And if your hay fever is not well controlled, you're at risk of your asthma getting out of control. And there's a big yeah. rise in asthma attacks when the pollen count gets high. Yeah. Mm. So really important that you make sure you're taking your asthma meds as well. Don't forget to do that. I think the first thing is make sure you're taking enough of the basics. So the nasal spray, make sure it's one that's a steroid based one. You can get them over the counter. Check with your pharmacist that you're taking the maximum dose. Often you can take twice what's recommended, especially when your symptoms are bad. Make sure you do the same with the antihistamines. Make sure it's a long acting, non sleepy one. So something like cetirizine or loratadine. Again, ask either your GP or your pharmacist if it's okay to take double the dose for a few days, because usually that's absolutely fine. And then there's some other things that will help, saltwater nasal sprays, pollen balms, got some examples down here that, that might be helpful. Um, but if all of that, you're still having difficult days and sometimes that will happen, it's just the severity of your hay fever and it's mm -hmm. worth making a, 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 a just make an appointment with your GP, not so much for now, more for when the season's finished, to talk about how you're going to manage next season, because the same thing's going to happen next the year. The trouble is, um, and I'm going to say this on behalf of a lot of people who are watching, be saying, there's no chance I'm going to get to see my GP yeah. over this. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. So I'm not suggesting they're going to help right now with your hay fever. I think the pharmacy is the best place to go for that. But in terms of getting an appointment, even in two or three months' time, to talk about desensitisation, because if you're that for bad next for next year, because not it's too late to start for this year, the season started. But in advance of next year, it's a treatment that can be really helpful. It's really only for people who have bad hay fever, who have done exactly what you've done. They've taken all the medicines, and despite that, you're still having a really tough mm. time of it. You're somebody who's really likely to benefit from that, mm. but it needs to start before next season gets going. OK, Sally, I hope that helps, and Thanks, I hope it's Sally. not too bad for you the next few days. Uh, we've got Shannon on the line now. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Phil. Hi, Holly. How are you? Oh, Hi, really good. Good. good to talk to you. Now, you're calling about you've got a one-year-old son. Yeah, I do, yeah. And you think he's yeah. got a bit of hay fever coming on. Yeah, I mean, I suffer myself anyway, but my son's been suffering, I think, now for the last couple of weeks. And when he can't tell you, because he's only one, what sort of symptoms has he got? Um, I mean, like, he's got the watery eyes, the snotty nose. Um, yeah. And I, with my hay fever, I get, like, quite wheezy. Um, so, yeah, I think he's suffering as well now. So, I think there's a good chance this probably isn't hay fever. It's usually people develop hay fever in late teens, early adulthood. Certainly, we see kids in our clinics, maybe from three or four, very occasionally less than that. But it will be really unusual for a one-year-old. And I think with a one-year-old who's got watery eyes and a runny nose and those sorts of symptoms, it's probably just another viral infection. And of course, one-year-olds are getting them back to back all the time, especially if they're at daycare or nursery. So it, you, you could do worse than trying a little bit of antihistamine. You can get the right sort of antihistamines over the counter, even for young children, because of course that will help if it is hay fever. But my guess is that it's not going to help because it probably isn't. So hay fever is something you could grow into. As, as that child gets a little bit older. So you'd take a bit of the antihistamine and if nothing happens, the symptoms are still there, at yeah, least you know it's I would, not Yeah, that. exactly. I'd I'll, I'll, I'll move on and, and just treat it as a regular viral infection. There okay. you go, Shannon. Brilliant. Thank you. All I'll right. give that Thank a try. Thank give you. It a Have try. a nice day. Thank, Thank you. You too. Well, Bye now. Helen says, I've had hay fever since I was three years old. This year seems to be worse than normal. I was told not to open windows or hang my washing outside. Does this apply and do you have any other advice? Yeah, so those things will help a little bit. And there's other things. There's lots of people who, for, for good reasons, aren't keen to take medicines. So avoiding going out at the times that we know the pollen counts are highest. So the pollen sort of 
is released in the morning, it goes up in the air, so dawn is when the levels are highest, and then at dusk, as the day cools down, the pollen grains come back down. So those are the times to avoid being outside. Washing your hair when you come back in, so you don't rub pollen on your pillow and then rub your nose in it all night. Um, saltwater nasal sprays, pollen balms to just... How things... do you administer a saltwater nasal spray, then? What's the, 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 the amount of salt to water? Well, I, I have to say, I usually don't tell people to make it themselves because it's so easy to just go and get it over the counter now. Right. And there's a whole range of them that are just um, <clears throat> saline in a, in a very nice, handy device. Here you go, I've got one there that you can just stick up your nose and give it a good spray. And it just rinses out all the pollen so that it doesn't sit in there causing more allergic reactions over the course of the day. Um, if you go online, actually, it's really easy to find how to do it yourself. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's pretty easy to get hold of. OK, uh, thank you for that. Sarah says, I'm currently 10 weeks pregnant and I've been told by the GP that there is nothing I can take for my hay fever until I'm 12 weeks pregnant. I get some quite extreme reactions to hay fever, ranging from sneezing, itchy, swollen eyes and my whole face swelling up. Oh, my goodness. Is there anything I can do to get me through the next two weeks? Staying in isn't an option as I have a dog and a little boy who loves being yeah. outside. So 20% of pregnant mums will get problems with hay fever during the course of their pregnancy and it can be a real issue exactly as, as, as we've just heard about. Now actually most of the regular hay fever medicines are fine. Of course things like the saltwater nasal sprays, pollen balms, absolutely fine. And it's always a case of just having a chat with, with your doctor or the pharmacist, just balancing how bad your symptoms are with the tiny risks of taking medicines. But actually, loratadine, one of the over-the-counter antihistamines, there's really no evidence at all of any harm whatsoever during pregnancy. So that would usually be my first choice. And again, worth a discussion with your doctor, but nasal sprays are usually fine as well during pregnancy. Okay. And here's something really strange. If you develop hay fever during your pregnancy, your child is more likely to get hay fever, but it's also more likely to be a girl. What? Yeah. <laughs> Go figure. I love stuff yeah. like that. Really, yeah. I've never yeah. heard that before. A couple before. of studies have shown that. Not a big effect, but yeah. Oh my God. Well, love there you that go. Little nugget. That's good. Uh, is I hope it that genetic? Helps Hay fever is very much genetic, yeah. So if you've got a, a family history of asthma, eczema, hay fever, food allergies, things like that, you're more likely to get that tendency. And if you've got that tendency in your genes, you're more likely to develop hay fever as you get older. Hmm. Okay. Uh, thanks, Sarah. So then uh, Paul has got in touch and says, I have really bad uh, hay fever, the GP prescribed, and I'm going to say this wrong, so I'm going to ask you to do it, fexofenadine? Is that right? Yeah, fexofenadine, oh, very good. Uh, but it's not working very well. Is there a better alternative to that? My face has become spotty since using this, and I wondered if it's connected. I don't think the spotty face is likely to be related, yeah. but there's a number of different antihistamines that are broadly the same, they're all the same family, what we call second generation antihistamines, which means they're long lasting, which is good, and they're non drowsy, which is good. And if you're not getting on with one of them, like fexofenadine, yeah. have a try of the other ones, cetirizine, loratadine, um, all of them are broadly the same. Don't expect one of them to work much better than the other because they are very similar. All right, fine. Um, John says, I suffer really badly from hay fever. I've tried everything possible from over the counter. Nothing has worked. And this is really putting a strain on me. It makes it difficult for me to make summer plans with my swollen eyes, itchy throat and other symptoms. Are there home remedies I should try? Is it worth making an appointment with my GP to get something stronger? Home remedies... <laughs> not really ten, that helpful most of the time. The local honey thing, it really doesn't work. If you've got hay fever like we've just heard about, it's a real problem. It has a big impact on day-to-day -day life. You know, two, three months of the year, you're just not able to work properly, enjoy yourself properly, you won't be sleeping well. It has a big impact on people studying for their exams. We've got the A-levels and the GCSEs coming up very soon. And if you've got hay fever, it will affect how well you do. Mm. So I think in that sort of situation, yes, go and see your doctor and ask about desensitisation. So NHS clinics across the country, they'll offer injection immunotherapy, which involves a series of injections of the pollen that you're allergic to. It can be very, very helpful. And also they can offer sublingual immunotherapy. Same principle, it's the pollen that you're allergic to, but as tablets that go under your tongue. So these things are available, but they're not going to come to you. You are going to have to um, go and advocate for yourself with your GP and get a referral to a and specialist energy service. And you say compared to other countries in Europe, we're really behind on this. Yeah, for every, every person that gets sublingual immunotherapy in the UK, there's 100 getting it in Germany. So right. across continental Europe and the US, these are much, much more regularly used treatments. Mm. And they're clinically proven. Um, and in the UK, there are fully licensed treatments. Um, that you can get prescribed, but you've just got to get to the right place and in front of the right specialist in order to get that. It seems funny, though, you look at... Well, funny, certainly not the word. Um, look at that line-up of things there that sort of do a bit. Nothing does a lot, other than, unless you can get in and have some serious uh, treatment for it. That, that 
drug companies are constantly attempting to make as much money as they possibly can. I mean, you'd have thought that a, you know, a spray that really alleviates hay fever should be way into development, and there should, there should be something that, that can sort it out. There's a lot of research interest in this because an enormous number of people suffer from hay fever. It's 20% of the UK population, and it's the same across the developed world. Um, I think it's fair to say that for most people, these medicines do do the job. Mm. Um, it's often that they're just not taking them. So I think for about 70 or 80% of people, if you took regular antihistamines and a nasal spray, you should be absolutely fine. Mm. I think the challenge is for that remaining minority where they're doing all the right things and despite that, it's still awful. Mm. And even with desensitisation where there's all these access issues, sometimes that doesn't completely do the job. There's still a gap there and, and very much hope that over the course of the next few years, we'll see improvements. But yeah, that would yeah be good, let's wait it? and see. Lovely to see you. Thanks Likewise. for your advice today. Right.